Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ta'ala ve berekatuhu. Elhamdülillah. 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 Sübhanallahi ve elhamdülillahi ve la ilahe illallahu ve allahu ekber. Ve la havle ve la kuvvete illa billahi lali nazim. Sübhanallahi ve elhamdülillahi ve la ilahe illallahu ve allahu ekber. Ve la havle ve la kuvvete illa billahi lali nazim. Sübhanallahi. الحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا الحمد لله we glorify and praise our Lord and thank Him that we are able to sit with you all to share some thoughts and messages for this new year of 1445 Hijri. Subhanallah. We have come to the middle of the 15th century since the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have a beautiful guest who has come to be with us. I think you can hear, hear it. And it is almost 1500 years since the birth of the, uh, the seal of prophethood, the final messenger, the bringer of the Quran since he walked this earth, since he was born here. 1500 years is a long time in the history of humanity to spend on earth without a prophet or messenger of God walking on earth. It is an unprecedented time. No, no, at no time before have so many generations of human beings lived on earth uh, without a prophet of God or a messenger of God walking amongst them. And we know from the hadith, which I will ask you to refer and learn, that we are in an extended period uh, from the time allotted to our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa To put it simply, for the sake of, I have a lot to cover. Uh, once our Prophet وسلم, said, I was given one uh, and I asked for it to be extended. And Allah extended it by half. These are my own words. Um, and the companions asked or they wondered what this one is and what this, what this half is. Uh, and some, some commentators consider one to be a thousand years and half to be five hundred. In any case, 1500 years is an enormous amount of time uh, for human beings. This is roughly around 40 generations, uh, 40 generations to have lived on earth after the passing of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we know from our cosmological understandings and teachings that 40 is a sacred number of uh, many connotations in the mulk and the malakut. So these are things we keep in mind as we enter this year of 1445. Also, we understand the uh, immense acceleration that we are witnessing in how human societies are changing. Uh, what we consider moral and immoral is shifting. Uh, and the enormous, enormous uh, so-called progress or enormous, we will call it, um, conquering, uh, the enormous emphasis that has been placed on conquering the natural world, on controlling it, on owning it and controlling it, that came about with the Industrial Revolution about 150 years ago. Now we are in the cusp of the Digital Revolution. But the Industrial Revolution saw this immense, very rapid advancement of human abilities, abilities to conquer nature, 
to exploit, and for, I, I prefer to say exploit rather than conquer, uh, to explore, they say, with, the, with machines, greater and greater machines. Uh, if you think about human populations, they were fairly stable for millennia, but the massive expansion of population growth began in, with the starting of the 19th century, that's the early 1800s. At that time, if I remember right, there were only one or two billion people on earth. And that number had not shifted much for as far as we know. But the 19th century, 20th century especially, we see this massive increase in human population. So that your grandparents, my grandmother, Arhamha, when she was born on earth, there were still around two, mil two billion close to three billion. By the time she passed away, almost after a hundred years, we are now uh, topping eight billion people. So enormous increase. And that was possible because of the industrial revolution. So uh, our farming is industrial, our building is industrial, our medicine is industrial, our healthcare system is industrial, our transportation is industrial. So all the obstacles humans had to expand were removed and they were removed and I would say bludgeoned out of the way in this conquering mentality. So we must conquer life on earth, we must conquer the flora, we must conquer the fauna, we must conquer everything. Now you must conquer the moon and now more than the moon beyond that. So this is a mentality that was not it's a very dangerous mentality. It's a mentality that led to the destruction of the jinn when they were the beings created by Allah to rule the earth. We talk about this in the first book of cosmology. Now, after the jinn failed so miserably and they almost destroyed the earth because of their mad quest for power, the human being was created as an even better creation who had Allah's ruh breathed into it and sent to earth here to look after the earth and protect the flora and the fauna to be custodians over this massively beautiful creation uh, to look after the animals and the trees and the plants to bring peace and harmony to be praised by the creation of Allah in continuous glorification of Allah, to be praised by the clouds and the wind and the earth, and the, the beautiful nature that surrounds us, to be praised by the birds and the fish in the sea, <laughs> that we are looking after them and bringing, bal bringing balance to nature. That is why we were sent here. And we were doing that despite all our faults and troubles and problems and all the societies that were destroyed by Allah. Uh, but by and large human beings were doing that. It is only within this past 100, 150 years that we are seeing the enormity of the destruction around us. Such that now, I remember when I was a young girl, a teenager, I was very concerned about what would happen to societies. Uh, especially living in a developing country, I was worried what would happen if the developing nations tried to mimic the lifestyle of the developed so-called rich nations, which were known to exploit natural resources. And now that is what is happening all across the world. All societies want to live a rich lifestyle, unfortunately, at the cost of exploitation of the natural world. So the earth is complaining. We can see uh, the earth, our mother, has complained to Allah. <laughs> the wind is complaining, the atmosphere is complaining, the trees are complaining, the animals are complaining. So if this creation, which is in pure ibadah of Allah, purely bowing down, prostrating to Allah all the time, glorifying and praising Allah all the time, if they start making dua against the human being, we have no... Who is going to save us? Who is going to save us from that du'a? That is what we are witnessing now, the climate crisis, 
the implosion of every type of harmony and balance on earth. And as that happens, we are seeing implosions of human values, human societies are falling apart. Um, rich societies are falling apart through enormous spreading of mental anxieties and instabilities and uh, the, the fitra, the, what makes a human being a human being, the connection we have to our surroundings, uh, the subhanallah, the my surroundings, may Allah preserve the sanctity of this place. That is being eroded and torn and abused, abused by human madness, human blindness, human greed. More than anything else, this is greed. We don't understand the destructive power of greed. I want, I want, I want. Conquering means I want. Why do you want? Where are you? What are you going to do with it? You will leave it and go back to Allah in the end. You will enter Mother Earth and she will take her retribution. She will get her chance then. SubhanAllah. And remember it was greed. Greed that at the very basic level we will leave all the psychological analyses and all the intellectual thoughts and all the complex arguments as to why say the Adam, say the Adam and say the Hawa ate that from that tree they were forbidden to eat from. At the very basic level it was greed. You saw something, you want something, you take it. Don't do that. Be careful about greed. So the first thing I wanted to mention on this day of 1445 is the climate crisis. We as Muslims as the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as the last, last uh, remaining custodians of true knowledge, cosmological knowledge, clarified, presented, made easy for us by the the greatest teacher of all time, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This knowledge was taught by so many other teachers. Uh, who came to teach so many peoples and their teachings still remain in so many religions and indigenous societies. We don't know the names of all the prophets and messengers. But our master Muhammad والسلام, he clarified it, he simplified it, uh, he organized it and we have the Quran that is the blueprint for all of it and gives us the principles for all of it such that we are the real holders of this treasure. Now, if we Muslims are not leading the struggle to preserve Mother Nature and protect the animals and the plants, and we are the first to raise our voices against the destruction, the mad exploitation, if we Muslims are not the, if the vanguard of that movement, uh, we have to be ashamed of ourselves. Because this, everything else that plagues us in our societies and communities, these are the nature of empire building and social constructs and the cycles of life. And uh, Allah has told us about that, all that we must do. But to be Khalifatul Ard, custodian of the earth, to do what say the Adam was sent to do, say the Hawa was sent to do, that is a that is the reason we were created, to worship Allah. Worshipping Allah, we cannot do that if we are not in harmony with the cosmos. So we have to regain this knowledge and we have to be the first to preserve nature. I remember my own grandmother, uh, if he had to cut a branch of a tree because it was blocking something, she would not let us cut it if there was a flower or a bud or a little fruit that is going to become a fruit on that branch. He says, no, life is going to come from that tree. You have to allow the life to come, live its life, then you cut the tree uh, or the branch. So this is her innate understanding of Islamic cosmological truths and knowledge. This knowledge is, I would say, 95% lost. At Irfa, we are trying to revive that. It's very hard work very, very hard work because it is um, so lost. Reviving it requires 100% uh, commitment and energy and time. 
And to do that also in a way modern people understand. So may Allah continue to bless us and help us so that we can do this. And we need your help. We need your help. Uh, financially, we need help. Uh, it takes a lot of money and time to publish books, to write them, to transcribe them, to edit them, to typeset them, to design their cover, to put them out. So if you can help us with that, may Allah reward you for it. We are bringing to light Islamic knowledge that is um, cosmological knowledge. I have spoken about this many times. I, I have a lot to cover, so I don't want to uh, go off on tangents. So please refer to those old talks. But how much of our understanding of why the earth is like it is, why the heavens are like it is, why the clouds form, why the sun and the moon have their cycles, all these things that modern science is trying to examine and explore and understand, we were taught that not just from the mulki perspective, not from the empirical perspective, as when I used to teach, when I, when I was teach, you know, I used to lecture in university, I'd say, the empirical perspective is the least amount of it. There's the surface level understanding. All scientists know this, because a true scientist knows that they know very little. But, but from the little they know, unfortunately, human hubris, human arrogance, the little they know, they try to manipulate everything. And this is the wisdom that our forefathers, our ancestors, up to the time of Sayyidina Adam knew that, no, you don't manipulate knowing a little, you bow down to Allah and ask Allah to tell you what to do, to guide your decisions. So you become the custodian, the protector, the preserver, not the abuser and the oppressor and the tyrant. So you must learn this. It is imperative that time is running out. The time is running out. You must learn why you are here on earth. You must examine and question all the rahma that was preserving our parents' generations, our grandparents, etc. That was rahma. Purely Allah's Rahma that even if you didn't spend the time to learn, even if you didn't spend the time to know, even if you were disregarding everything else, the Rahma of the good people who have lived before, Allah's pleasure with them was surrounding you. But now, now the, the Muslims themselves are becoming part of the, the problem. Uh, amongst most of the people I see, Muslims are the least concerned about the environment, the least concerned about polluting, the least concerned about how their excess will harm the earth. Mm -hmm. so, so now where will the Rahma come from? Where will the Rahma come from? We may pray and we may pray and we may pray, but I, I think the dua of the, the, the blade of grass on the earth that you have trampled walking to the mosque in your hurry, Maybe the blade of grass will make a complaint to Allah. Subhanallah, I don't know. I don't know, but I know that we have to be the custodians of this earth and we must learn. And remember, remember you are here for a short time. Do not let this upside down priorities infiltrate the deeper score of your heart. It's okay if they're in your brain, you have to think about them when you have to earn a living, you have to bring a, look after your family, etc. You must leave a legacy, all that. But don't let it infiltrate the core of your heart. The core of your heart knows that you are here for a short sojourn. You return to Allah, you are Bani Adam. You are not here to build your permanent home. This is the message the Qur'an says over and over and over again. When you have that clear and correct, then you can make this place so beautiful, it will remind you of paradise. Your home here should remind you of your other home, so you don't feel so homesick. Now you can't remember paradise, and so the, the, this earth that resembles paradise, but it is not as beautiful. 
It is not as perfect. So what do you do? You can't remember paradise. You destroy what Allah has given you to remind you of your home. So you must learn. That should be your first, first thing. We talk about New Year resolutions in Western society. You examine your priorities in your life. Your priorities, your purpose. Why on earth, O oh Allah, did you put me here? <laughs> what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Why am I living? Why am I this? SubhanAllah, you must know that. And the Quran will guide you and teach you and help you find that answer. But there is a method and there is a path you have to follow. If you don't know the method, you don't know the path, start learning. I, I've said this many, many times. This is crucial, critical, essential knowledge. It, it is, if everything else in your life is useful knowledge, but it loses its usefulness if you don't know what is critical and crucial. So start learning. And I promise you, subhanAllah, if your intention is sincere, if your heart is true, if your yearning and longing is purely for the love of Allah, Allah will send you teachers, Allah will send you guides, Allah will send you and guide you. I promise you that. You will reach your destination because Allah promises that. This is Allah's promise and He has Evidenced it upon, evidenced it upon, evidenced it by all the life of all the people who have loved him and served him, as he continues to do. But, but from you it must be sincere, it must be truthful, it must be from a heart yearning to get to the truth. Not for, I feel better about myself, not for so and so will say this and this about me. Not for any of that. Hmm? Al-Haq is Al-Haq. There's no, there's no subjectiveness. So, Al-Hayatu dunya what does Allah say in the Quran? Dunya mata. Dunya is a fleeting joy. It's beautiful. It's delightful. But don't Yani, all the happiness Allah gives you in your life is to remind you about the happiness you had and to, to encourage you for, to build a greater happiness and to do what you came here to do. So when you, you will feel an enormous satisfaction. Imagine you are a person, the trees are praising your name, the birds are praising your name. Subhanallah, the animals are praising your name. Imagine that. That is what you came here to do. So do it. Allah help you. And this is, this is what they say, that when Sayyidina Isa comes back, he will restore this balance. That is the meaning of the, some of the prophecies, that there will be so much peace on earth because the animals will no longer feel threatened and even the animals are having mental diseases because of what we have done to the earth. They will not be traumatized. Huh? Nature will go back to the harmony it was created in. This harmony is a sign of Allah's beauty, Allah's beauty and His majesty. So I want to recite, I talk about, about the pairing of the ayat. There are two phrases in the Quran that, are, that come twice. Huh? وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ 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 If you will keep this in your heart, every time you go through calamity, difficulty, sadness, trials, it will strengthen it so much. Every time you go through trauma, every time you lose a loved one, Every time you wonder, why is this happening to me, oh Allah? Allah has said that. It will strengthen you. Strengthen you, right? These ayat of Allah come to help you, not to depress you, no. The true depression is when you exult and when you are so excited about some fleeting thing in, on earth. When, it, when it's taken away from you, you fall. I, I, <laughs> I know this from experience and I know so many young people, they pursue that passion, this passion, this 
excitement at the end they they are more deflated than before don't be like that our, our ancestors are true the traditional muslim ways we are people of ummatul wasat we are people of moderation we neither unnecessarily grieve neither do we exult so wamal hayatu dunya illa mata'un urur we have happiness in this world we don't make it such a big deal that we implode after this is what we call the true joy so you must manifest that true joy it should be manifested in your heart your brain your psyche your being then you become a person of noor being of light that light is so powerful if you could see the malakut if your basira was open and you could see the malakut if you see a person walking on the street with that noor you will see them it will blind you this is what the angels see this is what the shaitan see and they run away Huh? some animals some trees some maybe the rocks and the earth i don't know maybe they see the malakut so they praise your name and when yawm al qiyamah comes now you are in a malakut manifestation more than mulki that is what will be seen that light subhanallah so we remind ourselves and we remind everyone وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الورود. so we read the ayat. it comes in two ayat in the Quran. one is ayah 185 of Surah Al Imran. the other one is ayah 20 of Surah Hadid. so Surah 185. Allah says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. كل نفس ذاهكة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زهزها عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور كل نفس ذاهكة الموت every نفس will taste death وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زهزها عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. I will read the translation so it's easier and quicker than my translating it. كل نفس ذاهكة الموت. Every soul is going to taste death, and you will only be given your reward in full on the day of. the day of resurrection uh, and whoever who is removed far away from the fire and has entered and is entered into paradise then indeed he has succeeded indeed he has succeeded and remember and wamal hayatu dunya illa mata'ul urur and this life is nothing but mata'ul urur a fleeting pleasure and a deception Right? It is a it is a delusionary enjoyment. So enjoy it, but don't be deluded. Right? And then we'll go on to read three more ayat because we'll see how they are paired with the ayat in Surah Hadid. Out of the English. لا تبل لا تبلون في الأموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا وَإِنْ تَسْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ You will surely be tried in your wealth and in yourselves. And surely you will hear from those who were given the scripture before you. And from those who make shirk. أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا What? What? A lot that will hurt you, <sighs> but if you are patient, for in tasbiru wa tattaqu and have taqwa of Allah, are conscious of Allah, then in dalika min azmil umur. For then verily, uh, for verily that is the most resolute matter to have taqwa of Allah and to be patient. With all the painful things that you have to hear, 
an ayah 187 that says, And when Allah took a solemn pledge from those who were given the scripture before you, that surely they will make it clear and they will not hide it that surely you will make it clear for the people and you will not hide it but they cast it behind their backs and they bought it bought with it a little price hmm. and wo how woeful is that which they buy Eighty-eight. Don't be And do not think that those who exult in that which they give, and they love to be praised for that which they have not done. Do not think that they are at refuge from the punishment for them. For them there will be a, a painful punishment. So <laughs> whatever you do, do it for Allah only. Huh? Don't do things so you will be praised. A lot of people waste a lot of time thinking they are doing good but bringing upon themselves harm. It's better maybe if you were going to do something you think is going to bring people's prayers for you also say so and so is such a good Muslim. It might be better for you to sit at home and be in the dhikr of Allah in that time. It will be less work for you, it will bring you less harm and inshallah it will raise you in the ranks of closeness to Allah. So these are the inner principles of the heart and the niyyah, the intention the Quran clarifies. So Allah says ayah 189. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَدْوَ وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And for Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Allah has power and dominion and ability uh, over all things. So here Allah mentions the people of old that they were given a lot of knowledge but instead of uh, uh, teaching it, they hid it and they used it for their one benefit. Now that is a very, very dangerous thing and this is obviously uh, in the higher form referring to cosmological knowledge. So which is why we at Irfa, bi barakatillah azawajal are trying our, our hardest and it is taking everything we have, subhanallah, which we, we hope Allah gives us more so we can give more to bring it out in a way that modern people can understand. So please read the book of cosmology. Uh, support us, we need your financial help to keep Irfa going, to bring out the second and the third book, which Alhamdulillah I'm writing now. There's a lot of work to bring that book um, in front of the public. May Allah reward us and help us with it. So, Surat Hadid, huh? the paired the paired ayah of that comes in, the ayah number 20. It's a long ayah, but you will see if you read the, the, the series in Hadid with those ayat in uh, Ali Imran, you will see they complement and complement each other and the story now takes a better shape. We understand it in a, in a deeper way. So, first we'll read the ayah that has the paired phrase. This is ayah 20, Surat Hadid, A'udhu Billah Minna Shaitan Rajim. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان أعلم أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولحو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يحيج فتراه مسفرا ثم يكون هتاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومأفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. سادق الله. That says, 
a'lamu know that the life of this world annama al-hayatu ad-dunya la'ibun wa lahwun wa zinatun wa tafakhurun baynakum wa takathurun fi al-amwal wal awlad know that the life of this world is nothing but sport or playing now uh, subhanallah the modern terminology for everything is game the system game this game your diet game <laughs> game your financial growth it's a game hmm? so allah has already said this is nothing but a game laibun wa lahun wa zinatun so i'll read from this translation nothing but uh, sport in the day and idleness in the night and adornment Walahun wa zinatun and adornment, and mutual vaunting amongst you and the competition in amassing wealth and children. How many of us have seen this in our communities, our neighborhoods, our societies? If my neighbor has so and so, I must get so and so better than that. If my sister has one child, I only have. I wish I had a child. help that child allah has already given grow into a good muslim allah will bless you more don't be oh they have it i should have it if they have something better let me get better than that astaghfirullah astaghfirullah but allah is saying this is what it is <sighs> kamathali ghaythin a'jab al-kuffar nabatuhu thumma yahiju فَتَرَاهُ مُسْفَرًا ثُمَّ يَكُونُ هُتَامًا It is like the rain. Uh, the rain, like a rain, the growth of which is admirable to the disbelieving farmers. Then it increases in growth and you see it turning yellow. And it becomes shaf. Shaf, so it is like the... This is so. This is why, mashallah, the traditional people, especially those who farm and who work with the natural cycles, who without industrializing anything, <laughs> without controlling anything, who go according to the nature, they farm. They know it's like Subhanallah. The rain comes, Allah's blessing comes, all the immensity of the growth comes. It's so beautiful and overpowering and amazing, and then Subhanallah, the season is over. It all turns to in front of me. You can see all the grass is now turning brown, and it's gone. So, why are you so obsessed with it? Why are you so obsessed with it? وفي الآخرة أذاب شديد ومأفرة من الرضوان. And in the akhira, there is an أذاب شديد. There is a formidable. retribution whatever wrong you have to face the consequences of it this is a principle in creation what you do it's a principle even in the basic laws of physics a reaction has an equal and opposite reaction so we say equal opposite for mulki uh, realities when you go to malakuti realities other realities the equal and the equal changes because time and space doesn't work in the malakut like the mulk That's why people struggle so much. They try to understand it with their brain. They can't because the the reality is in a different um, creation. It's a different creation, but you can understand it with your heart if you train your heart and you teach your heart that knowledge. These are the cosmological sciences. We are trying to revive the sciences of Ihsan. So what does Allah say? Adabun shadidun. There is a retribution. I was talking about physics, so we say equal. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction in the mulk. The malakut, we don't know what equal means, but yes, you have to face that. Unless and until Allah has given you afu, has wiped it off, has erased it, or you have gone into istighfar, you have been embraced by the loving mercy of Allah. I've spoken about the meaning of istighfar a lot before. وَمَعْغَفِرَةٌ uh, That is istighfar. مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِدْوَانِ And Allah's pleasure. So ridwan, that is the highest form we try. We say we go from dhikr, shukr, ridwan. So I've spoken about these principles also. If you reach ridwan, subhanallah, you enter jannah. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَلَى بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ 
Bireiri Hisab is another phrase in the Quran that is paired. You should read those ayat. That is the meaning of the people who enter Jannah without reckoning. Say the Maryam when she was young reminded Zakaria of that. That Allah Yarzukulimeyasha Ubi Ghairi Hisab. Allah will look after and provision those he pleases without accounting, without so there is no cause for the effect. If he wants to give, he'll give. You don't need to have, oh I did this, so I will get this. That's what so these are higher levels. This is Allah's Ridwan. So we'll continue before I go off again. <laughs> Allah is reminding you, I'm reminding you, don't get so obsessed with the beauty and the mad pursuit of more and more on earth. It is, this is the lowest or the least real form of realities. Even the human being, subhanAllah, you won't have, you'll have, if you go to paradise, you don't have the your digestive system changes. You don't have, uh, you don't have to use the washroom. You know that, so you don't have your bladder and your, your. I, f I forget the medical terms. So, so even the your body anatomy changes. You don't have an anus. You don't have so, uh, you don't uh, defecate. All the, the things we have in our in our own form that Allah has put in the form that he didn't put in the paradise form. To remind you, this is dunya, this is not your true form. Your true form, you don't have that. Uh, one of my teachers, may Allah bless him, he used to say, whatever you eat, uh, anything you have to expel from that, now we have to, you know, we expel it, uh, we defecate, uh, we urinate. But in paradise, it comes out as sweat, and your sweat is, uh, is like, it's like musk. Your sweat is so fragrant, subhanAllah. We had a reminder that sweat can be perfume in our Prophet, والسلام, The Sahaba used to sneak up on him if he was resting, and there were beads of perspir perspiration on his forehead if it was a hot day. They take little bottles and collect, <laughs> and they use it as perfume, subhanAllah. So we, have, we don't know these things. You should learn, learn about that, subhanAllah. You must learn your fiqh, basic fiqh, what you need to live your life in a halal way. Uh, how to pray, how to eat, how to earn a living, all that. After that, that is for the people who train as muftis to go excessively to the study of fiqh. You start learning cosmological things. How to connect to Allah, who Allah is, what am I doing here, how does the heart work, what does the ruh mean, what are the angels who come. Mm. Why, what is the uh, malakuti reality of the dua I make? Why must I be in wudu all the time? How do the angels see my limbs? These things you should know. That's what brings so much harmony and presence and noor in your being. This is what our ancestors knew. Subhanallah, they knew it without knowing it. <laughs> we have lost it, so we must bring it back. Now we'll read some ayat surrounding this, this one. And inshallah, may Allah grant us tawfiq. We'll finish with that. So ayah 18, the whole of Surah Hadid, you can begin from 12. It's sort of expanding on this theme. But we'll read a little bit uh, for the sake of time. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillah. very hard to begin because each ayah before is more beautiful. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna al-musaddiqeena wal-musaddiqati wa aqradu allahu qardan hasana yudha'afu lahum wa lahum أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الصِّدِّيقُونَ وَشُهَدَاءُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ وَنُورُهُمْ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ أَعْلَمُ أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَحْوٌ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ كَمَثَلِ 
غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يحيج فتراه مسفرا ثم يكون هتاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومعفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور شابكوا إلى معفرة من ربكم وجنة أرضها كأرض السماء والأرض أؤدت للذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم ما ساب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير لكي, لكي لا تأسوا على ما فاتكم ولا تفرحوا بما آتاكم والله لا يحب كل مختال فخور الذين يبخلون ويأمرون الناس بالبخل وما يتولى فإن الله هو الغني الحميد صدق الله العظيم So ayah 18 will read the, the translation Bismillah Truly the men and women who give in charity and who loan to Allah an excellent loan it will be multiplied for them and for them is a gracious reward so we cite that ayah and ask you please to help us with your financial assistance. May Allah reward you for it. Amin Allah. Amin Allah. And Allah says, those who believe in Allah and His messengers, they are those who are true. Ulaika humu siddiqoon, the truthful ones. Wa shuhada'u inda rabbihim. And they are witnesses in the presence of their Lord. For them is their reward and their light for Nuruhum. That's what I say, they'll be shining with light when they are with Allah in Yawm al Qiyamah. As for those who disbelieved and belie belied, made, that is uh, called our signs, uh, lies, belied our signs, these are the people of the hellfire. And then that our long ayah, know that the life of this world is nothing but sport in the day and idleness in the night. An adornment and mutual wanting amongst you and competition in amassing wealth and children. It is like the rain, the growth of which is admirable to the disbelieving farmers. Then it increases in growth and you see it turning yellow and it becomes chaff. In the hereafter, a formidable punishment and also a forgiveness and also Ridwan from Allah, good pleasure from Allah. And the life of this world is nothing but mata'ul urur, a fleeting joy, a delusion. So Allah says, Sabiku ila ma'afiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin arduha qa'ardi sama'i wal ardi u'iddat lilladheena amanu billahi wa rasuli. So this is the race, not this crazy rat race most of us are stuck in. May Allah rescue us from such a state. Allah says, race with one another to the ma'afirah from your Lord and towards a garden, arduha uh, ka'ardin sama. Is the, the wideness of it, the expanse of it is like the expanse of all the heavens and the earth. It is made ready for those who believe in Allah and His messengers. This is the favor of Allah that He gives to whoever He pleases and Allah is the master of the most magnificent favor, subhanAllah. See, Allah here says, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَا يَشَاءُ He can give that to whomever he pleases. No? So it's tied to the بِغَيْرِ hisab ayat also in that way. So Allah says, No calamity happens in the earth nor within your own selves except it is already written in a book before it is brought out. That is truly easy for Allah. So why? So that لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَحْفْرَهُ So that you do not grieve excessively over, over, uh, over things, nor do you exult over things. 
uh, uh, nor, nor do you exult over what you have achieved. <laughs> so don't think you have done something great, SubhanAllah has written it for you. At the same time, don't regret and feel so bad and beat yourself up and I should have done this and I should have done that. No, that is also written. So Allah is saving you from both these things. A lot of us have regrets and sometimes the shaitan uses that I should have, I ought to have, what if, what if I have done that. La. Yeah, Allah protects you from that also, okay? And then Allah says, Wallahu la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhoor. Allah does not la love. Remember, la yuhib, we had the long lesson on that. These explanations of what a, a quality is, Allah does not love. Pay very close attention when this phrase comes. Wallahu la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhoor. Self-conceited, every self-conceited fakhoor, boastful, arrogant, vain person. <laughs> Be very careful of that. Allah does not love it. Hmm? And then Allah further explains, وَالَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ وَيَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبُخُلِ Those who hold back and enjoin withholding on men. And whosoever turns his back, truly Allah, he is self-sufficient, praiseworthy. So, they are, they, have, they are miserly, they are stingy. And they command other people also to be stingy and hold back. They say, no, no, don't do that. Sometimes you go to a so-called friend to get some advice and they say, no, don't do that. <laughs> if you're trying to do something, you know, subhanAllah, good. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّى فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ So whoever who turns his back on Allah, who turns his back on all the teachings and the enjoinings and everything we are calling to, know that Allah, غَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ He is all richness and all prayers. So Alhamdulillah, Allah will suffice. Allah will suffice. So this reminder for myself, for all of us here at Irfa, for all of us who gather to support and pray for us, mostly your dua, your good wishes, that is what we value the most and we thank Allah for the most because we know that is the greatest uh, power that helps us. We thank you for it. And we, Enjoin on us and we encourage all of you to continue working for Allah, to continue supporting those who work for Allah, to continue to be one community, helping and encouraging each other, to continue to be in the dhikr of Allah all the time, to send abundant salawat on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to continue to learn and reconnect yourselves not just with the teachings of Muhammad والسلام, which are the condensed and perfect and pure form, but also what you need to learn from the teachings of the messengers and the prophets who went before. Especially if there are those messengers and prophets who were sent to you in your local places. And they will also have taught of cosmological truths, which our master Muhammad would have clarified and refined. So learn and learn and learn and connect yourself to the true creation of Allah that is not like the human being nor like the jinn that has no free choice that is always in the obedience of Allah the praise of Allah the glorification of Allah Subha lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ardi Subha lillahi ma fis samawati wal ardi it comes in these two forms Subha lillahi ma fis samawati wal ardi everything on the earth and in the heavens is glorifying Allah if you could see that glorification and your that praise you will wish to be annihilated in the beauty of that light and the majesty of that truth and you will wonder at how Allah is still giving you life and keeping you in existence because what have you done what have you done what have you done to deserve any of the gifts of Allah? How have you praised Him? How have you glorified Him? How have you thanked Him, the one divine, who can raise a cloud ten times the, the height of Mount Everest in five minutes? What have you done? 
So you will understand then the immensity of the love Allah has for those good creations who have chosen to worship, who have had free choice and chosen to worship among the jinn and the ins. You will understand that how much love Allah has that you have made this choice and how Allah his love for you is manifesting in the rahmah, the barakah, the mawadda he holds you in. And then you will wonder, what am I doing with my life? That I am wasting my days in idle games and my night in idle rest. Your days should be spent in shukr of Allah, working for Allah. Your day, nights in dhikr of Allah. So you attain Allah's ridwan. And you can be, have some of the beauty and majesty of that little bird on the tree. That is, every atom of its being is praising Allah and glorifying Allah. And it is also in a state of willful obedience and glorification of Allah. And like the rocks and the below us and the door behind us and the wood and everything. So if you see that glorification, you wonder, what am I doing? This year has begun. New Hijriya, we are in the last of the three sacred months. Once Muharram is gone, it is a time of suffer, of time of journeying and working. Working, those of us, I remind myself, I have lost people I've known, mashallah, in the past year, who are not, they are not anymore on, on walking on the earth, they are now inside Mother Earth. We don't know if we will be with you. Next year, we don't know tomorrow or tonight. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. This is my sincere advice. Don't waste your time. And don't panic and wonder how you can learn all of this and find Allah. Just sit down. And turn everything off. Raise your hand. Ask Allah. Allah will give. This is Allah. He does not break his promise. He does not turn away from you. He does not leave you. Make Allah your friend. You know how to make friends. All of you know, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> make Allah your friend. Spend time with your Lord. Your Lord will never abandon you, never leave you, never grow tired of you, never use you, never use you, certainly never abuse you. And anyone who has Allah's friendship, alhamdulillah, has everything in the heavens and the earth and will not feel, um, will not feel wanting in anything. And will yearn to go back to paradise, to be with Allah without being trapped here. Without being trapped here, the only reason to stay here is to work for Allah and to thank Allah. Because the one problem, in my opinion, in paradise is you have no way of showing your gratitude to Allah. There is nothing you can do there to show how grateful you are to Allah. That joy is here. That is the joy of shukr. Shukr is a form of dhikr. Dhikr is a form of shukr. This is Ridwan. This is the true joy of life on earth. The joy of having an opportunity to show Allah how grateful you are. And SubhanAllah Allah has said in his Quran, if you are grateful to me, I will give you more. Allahu Akbar. What more is there than that? So we are mesmerized by the beauty and the wonder, the pure Jamal and the Jalal of our Lord. Subhanak. Subhanak. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah ilal azim Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina wa habibin Thank Allah and praise Him If there's any good I have said Subhanallah it is from Allah We thank and praise Allah for that if there's anything harmful or wrong that I have said, it is from myself. May Allah forgive me for that and wipe it off my record. Rabbana ina kafun kareem un tuhibu lafu faafu hanni. Rabbana faafir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbita qadamana wa ansurna
الكون الكافرين يا رحمن الحمد لله take your leave pray for me we pray for all of you and may we continue to taste the sweetness and the beauty of living our days and night in Allah's worship السلام عليكم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.